All right, guys. So welcome to this uh, this webinar on applying the really interesting and innovative and unique tapping technique to what is going on at the moment with the coronavirus. Um, so last week, we interrupted our 12-month transformation online webinar series to do a session with the guys on coping with the coronavirus. So if you haven't seen that, uh, please check it out. Um, M, if she can, will provide the um, will provide the link to that um, that webinar. But it's it's the, the it's entitled "Coping with COVID nineteen on the Weight Management Psychology website. Um, and so this webinar is really for. Uh, for people who know about the tapping technique, so you guys obviously are our 12-month transformation face-to-face -face guys. So we've already done some tapping. You already know about the tapping technique and we've already applied the tapping technique to food cravings. Um, so we are going to make this video available for anyone. So if you already know about tapping and you're watching this, just tap along with us. Or if you don't know anything about tapping, uh, M might provide another link that can help you understand a little bit about the tapping technique and how to apply it to a food craving. If M can't get that, that one up for you guys, it's simply weightmanagementpsychology.com.au slash tap away thin sanity. So that if, you, if you're watching this later um, and you don't really know too much about the tapping technique, that'll help you get all schooled up with what you need to know. So, obviously, the coronavirus is probably the biggest thing in all of our spaces right now. Uh, I'm definitely realizing in my sessions with clients and with my 12-month transformation guys, both online and face-to-face, -face, it's really put, uh, uh, among other things, a huge spanner in the works of our progress, but, but of course, more broadly in terms of our overall mental health. And, and I feel like, it, you know, we all feel like it's really greatly affecting the trajectory of our lives. Some of my clients are saying the world has changed and, and, and things are never going to be the same. So this is the biggest thing for us at the moment. But but we, we know a bit about the tapping technique. The tapping technique can be amazingly powerful. So let's see if we can use it to clear away some of our worries. So I'm going to be relying on on you guys to be giving me some of the worries that you're having around this epidemic, this pandemic um, and then we're going to see if we can can tap through them so i'm just going to be checking off to the side and seeing what you guys are coming up with and of course i'll probably be adding some of my own concerns along the way because i think that um not the right choice of words but but none of us are immune to to, to the effects of, of this virus so please in the comments Start to let me know what's going on for you. What would you like to clear away with the tapping technique? And then we're going to get to start uh, start tapping. What do we got, guys? I might get started. Uh, and 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 I'm just going to periodically just check over and see what uh, what's going on for you guys. So we start off on the karate chop point, and please, guys, tap with me. And I'm just going to go with with what's going on for me at the moment. Even though I'm feeling really unsettled by the coronavirus, I love and accept myself. Even though I'm feeling really uncertain about the way things are, are going to go, I completely love and accept myself. Even though I'm concerned about not only my own health and well-being, but that of my friends and family and the impact this is going to have on my business and my clients, I love and accept myself. This upset feeling, this uncertainty I'm feeling, this anxiety, all of this stress, 
this fear. What's going to happen? The world has changed. It will never be the same again. Take a breath. So that's a nice general round of tapping to to start us off. Um, I'd like you guys to, to, to let me know what's going on for you. And then also, as we do with that SUD scale, I want you to rate where you are on that that sud scale. So how intense is that feeling? So we can we can rate it at the start and let's see if we can get a bit of movement. And I'm just going to speaking of movement, I'm just going to center myself up a little bit. That's a little bit better. So let me come and uh, and check out what's going on for you guys. Okay, we're going to start with Barbara, just about the, the uncertainty. And, and Barbara, feel free to add anything that's going on for you into the comments as well. This uncertainty. This uncertainty I'm feeling. And remember when we're tapping, we're not trying to distract ourselves from the feeling. We're actually trying to be mindful of it and to acknowledge the reality of it. So if you're feeling any uncertainty, let's get involved in it. This uncertainty. I can't plan for anything. As soon as I make a plan, the plans change. Everything's shifting by the day. Everything feels like it's shifting by the hour. Everything feels like it's shifting by the minute. And take a breath. Ah, uh, Sue, I had to close down my 15-year-old business today for, for all of the health of the kids and the staff. I worry financially for me and my staff. This is fantastic. So financial worry is a huge one for a lot of us at the moment. This financial worry. I'm not going to have enough money. This is going to send me broke. And as I'm tapping along, if, if any statement comes along to you, it sounds, it's a, you know, if it's for me, it's a bit more like this. You just say your statement. Oh, this is going to be a huge hit. My employment or my work or my business. My staff, my team, they're really going to struggle. I'm worried about their financial well-being. This money stress, this money anxiety. Take a breath. Belinda, my frustration that work is still making us work in the office despite the fact that we can work from home and people just not taking it seriously. I think that's a wonderful thing to tap on. Work is still making us come in. We can work from home. Why aren't they making sensible decisions? Why is my workplace not making sensible decisions? Why is the government making stupid decisions? Why are people being stupid? Why can't people realize how important this is? Why are people still going out and congregating in groups as if there's no problem? All of this frustration. Take a breath. And then remember 
what we do with that suds rating we, we rate it on a scale of zero being completely clear not there at all to 10 being it's the worst it could possibly be and and let's put some numbers on it and see what happens with these these numbers over the course of our tapping session Emma feeling guilty being on honeymoon and not helping at work. Oh, these feelings of guilt. I should be doing more. I should be at work. I should be helping out at work more. I should be being more productive. Part of me knows that this is such a strange time, but part of me still feels like I should do what I always do. Part of me feels like this virus is just stuffing up my plans and my goals. These guilty feelings that I'm feeling, all of these guilty feelings in my brain and in my body. Yeah, there's, um, there's more on us not moving fast enough and being frustrated with people not taking it seriously and then putting, putting us at risk. I totally understand that. We're not fast enough as a nation. We're not doing everything we need to be doing. All this frustration at other people, they're so nonchalant. They don't care. I don't realize it's a problem. They're idiots. They're putting me at risk. They're putting my health at risk, my life at risk. They're putting my livelihood at risk. They're putting other people at risk. They're putting my parents at risk. They're putting the elderly at risk. They're putting the vulnerable at, at risk. This frustration and this anger. Take a breath. Guys, it'd be interesting to hear from you some numbers where you started off and where you, you're starting now. Remember when we rate that SUD scale, we're just being real with ourselves. We're not trying to make it better. If it goes down, that's great. If it stays the same, we've just got to keep on digging around to find that piece of the puzzle that might be one of those core aspects for us. Um, and if it goes up, that's just fine too. It probably means we're identifying a piece of the puzzle and bringing that to the surface that was there, but we're just becoming more aware of it. Yeah, I get this. Um, the conflict of being grateful that you have a job uh, as well. Um, so let's tap on that. It's like, oh, I feel really grateful that I, that I have a job but I'm still really frustrated with my job. These conflicted feelings, very normal at times like this to feel mixed emotions or conflicting feelings. Part of me feels grateful for what I have, but part of me is so frustrated at all those things that I can't do. Part of me has a perspective and I'm able to, to see what I have and the good things. Part of me is so focused on all the bad things. All of these mixed feelings. All of this confusion in my emotions. Don't really know how to feel. I'm going to go back to you guys. A oh, good one, Deborah. The availability of food choices is making me feel less confident. So let's tap on that. I can't get all the foods that I need. I don't know that I'll be able to get the foods that I need. I can't plan out my meals as I used to. I'm not going to be able to get nutritious food. I'm all over the shop or I'm going to be all over the shop with my food. 
I'm just going to have to eat whatever's there. And this worries me that I'm going to break my diet. You guys know that I don't like the words break my diet, but that's the reality of how some of us are, are probably feeling. Oh, this is going to throw my eating way off. And then that's going to spiral. I'm going to feel bad about that. It's another thing to feel bad about. Fantastic one, Narelle. How am I going to cope with managing my two boys at home trying to get them to do schoolwork? Oh, how am I going to cope with the kids at home? I'm not a trained teacher. How am I going to get these kids to do their work? Part of me may feel like they need to be home. But another part of me is just stressed at how I'm going to manage all of that and how I'm going to manage all of that in amongst all of my other commitments. While part of me might see it as the right thing to do, another part of me is very concerned about it, frustrated and unsure as to how it's all going to work. This difficulty in balancing kids being at home. Take a breath. Yeah, fantastic. Melanie, I'm worried about not giving my 12-month transformation my full time and effort. So many distractions, including COVID, that are taking away from this experience. Um, and this is what I said to the 12-month transformation online, guys. And I think uh, it's the same thing I'm saying to all of my clients. And I think that, you know, psychologists, we, we worry about the extremes. So, if you are taking your goals that you set at the start of the year and trying to do them exactly as planned and ignoring the fact that things have drastically changed in the most pervasive and unprecedented way, we're going to run into trouble. But I think we also can recognize if we completely abandon any of our own goals or dreams or values, then we're going we're gonna to struggle just as much, maybe even more, who knows? Um, but neither of those extremes are good. So, so let's start to tap away some of that. This means I'm not giving my 12-month transformation everything I could. This has thrown a spanner in the works of my goals and my dreams. I can't focus on myself as much as I'd like to. Feeling stretched between dealing with all of the immediate things and what I really want to do for the long term. Maybe even this self-judgment, feeling as if I'm a failure because I can't juggle all of these balls. Frustration. Why did this have to happen when I was focusing on taking care of myself? This has thrown a real spanner in the works of my eating, real spanner in the works of my movement. May as well just give up. I can't do it perfectly, so I may as well not do it at all. Let's take a breath. Okay, Narelle said I started on eight, still there. So, Narelle, see if you can think of anything um, that, that, you know, I always ask the question, why am I an eight and not a zero? And let's see if we can get into a bit more of that and see if we can get that number down. Um, Deborah said um, the SUD, SUD, the SUDS, the, the, the um, subjective unit of discomfort scale was an eight uh, for food. Uh, food cravings, I'm assuming, and then uh, it's it's dropped down to a six. Yeah, Fiona, really good one. Fiona said, "I'm I'm worried about what might happen. Mum is in um in aged care. My dog's really old. 
what if I can't find a vet if I want one or I, I need one? Let's tap on that. I'm worried about what might happen. I'm really worried about my, my elderly mum. Or just I'm really worried about my mum. I'm really worried about my dad. I'm really worried about someone who might be at high risk. I'm worried about someone who has lung issues. And you can insert their name. I'm worried about someone who has compromised immunity. I'm worried about people in general. I'm worried about my dog or my cat. What if I can't find a vet? What if they need help and we can't get help for them? All of this worry, all of this worry that I can put my finger on, and all of this worry that's sitting in my subconscious. Let's take a breath. Okay, guys, keen to hear your thoughts on how you're feeling now, what's going on, what other concerns or worries or doubts that, that you have. Or even for you, if you want to revisit an area that you've been tapping on and start to, to sort of dig around and see if there are any other aspects, any other pieces of the puzzle of that, that issue for you. Or anything you want to just um, just do another round on. I'm just going to go and check and see if there's anything here. Not too much. I think, let me think of, um, of some other things that are going on for people that might be going on for you. Ah, oh, yeah, that was one of the things, Barbara, that I was going to say. It feels like it will go on forever and things will never be the same again. Um, in, um, in the webinar I did around coping with COVID-19, I, I talked about some of the naturally pessimistic attitudes that we can get into. Um, Personalisation, feeling like the problem's all about us. Um, permanence, feeling like it's going to last forever. We call these the three Ps. Um, and pervasiveness, feeling like it just encompasses absolutely everything. Let's do a, a round on those. Wonderful, wonderful call. This is going to last forever. Things are never going to be the same. The world has changed and it's never going back. And why do bad things always happen when I'm trying to get ahead? Why do bad things always happen to me? This is just another in the long line of bad things. And this is everywhere. This is pervasive. It's in my mind. It's affecting my work. It's affecting my relationships. It's affecting the country. It's affecting the economy. It's affecting everything. This is a bad thing that's happened to me. The world is not going to go back to the same. This is just going to, to go on forever. And this is affecting every single area of my life. Let's take a breath. And of course, um, I think those feelings are very, very normal when bad things happen. Um, and I think this, this virus and the, the impact it's having on the world does seem pervasive. It feels like there's no area of our lives that it's not touching. But as you know, sometimes as what happens when we, when we tap through and we clear away some of those um, 
those uh, blockages or um, we let go of some baggage through the tapping technique. Sometimes uh, naturally positive thoughts just seem to pop up once we, we clear away those things. And it's, it sort of struck me that while it might seem pervasive, um, there are areas of our lives that it doesn't necessarily touch. And for me, I think one area that it doesn't necessarily have to touch in a negative way is our spirituality. Um, or you might think of that as um, some psychologists just think of that as our, our connection with our values, what matters to us, um, our empathy um, and, and, and our connection w with other people, which might sound funny, even uh, a type of, of social distancing. Uh, but I think that is one area as a psychologist that I believe we have control of is how we respond to this. Um, not saying that, you know, we're not going to feel bad. That's what we're doing this whole tapping session on. But I feel like there are aspects of our, our values and our, maybe our spirituality um, and our connection with other people that this virus doesn't have to touch, at least in a, a negative way. Okay, Narelle has um, said, I've gone down to a six which is cool, feeling less overwhelmed. So I think that's really, really good. So what I would encourage you um, to do, uh, and, and, and so you guys are, that are doing the webinar with me now, but also anyone who's watching later, if you're not a zero, just ask yourself that question and continue with your own tapping and, um, and see if you can get it down a little bit lower. Interesting. Karen asks a question, how do I know what I can control in this? There's so much that isn't in our control. Um, and, and so what I might do is I tap on all of those things that you, you can't control and tap away, not your knowledge of those, but tap away the worries of those. And you might find that there actually becomes a lot that's in control. So let's, let's tap on that now and see what happens. So much I can't control. I can't control where I work. I can't control if I'm going to be able to go to work tomorrow. I can't control what the government says. I can't control the rules, those ever-changing rules that the government's setting. I can't control whether I'll be allowed out of my house. I can't control what's going to happen to the economy. I can't control that they've shut down events and gyms and non-essential services. I can't control any of that. All of these things that I can't control. This ever-growing list seems to be getting bigger and bigger of all these things I can't control. Take a breath. So that is the one way that you can use the tapping technique to help you with clarity. Um, so after clearing away some of your barriers, and it'd be interesting to hear, Karen, hopefully some things that, um, that you can control either popped up or if you want to do another round or two of tapping, once you can clear that focus on the things you can't control, um, then, then you, it might help you with, um, with just, just being able to think and, and identify some things that you can control. Yeah, Fiona says, um, I agree. It's mildly and slowly reducing. Sue says, I'm concerned that I should be feeling more devastation. It's just not sinking in. Um, and then I'll be left looking stupid and unprepared because I haven't prepared enough. I think that that's an, a really interesting point because Sometimes people worry about tapping away worries and concerns, but the tapping technique won't clear away any helpful responses. We can actually use the tapping technique um, to, to clear any negative thoughts that might get in the way of us 
taking action. So, so if you're thinking, look, I should be feeling more devastation, I should be more concerned, let's tap on the other side of things uh, because absolutely this tapping technique is to help you calm yourself down, to focus on what you can control and to take better care of yourselves. Um, but absolutely, it's not to tap away any legitimate worries or to prevent you from doing anything that, um, that's really important for you to do. So let's tap away some of those feelings that I'm sure we've all felt at different stages at the very least, that kind of nonchalance. Oh, it's not that big a deal. It's just going to pass. Won't be that big a deal. People are making too much of an issue out of this. I know the rules, but sometimes I think I know a bit better. I know that I should wash my hands regularly, but sometimes I'll just forget and that's okay. I know that I have to keep a social distance. I have to stay at home. I have to stay 1.5 metres away from people. But if I have to walk past someone, that's not a big deal. If I have to go out and do something I really need to do, then I'll just do it and risk it. The risk is really low. Part of me feels like I'm not worried enough about this. I kind of feel like it hasn't sunk in how important this is. This lazy, carefree attitude that might come back to bite me later, but I still feel anyway. Take a breath. Okay, guys, how are we feeling now? I think that's a um, a really good time to um, to really sort of wrap things up. I think we've done a lot of good tapping around a lot of areas and I hope you've all been tapping along, which is always good to do in group tapping, even if you haven't felt like those issues related to you because sometimes they do on more unconscious levels. Now, you know, I'm always, I always really want you to, um, to have a good grasp of the tapping technique. So let's all finish up with just focusing on something that is unique to us, something that's still there for us that we think we might be able to clear away or at least get partway in a round of tapping. And we'll just do a round of silent tapping. This is something we do in our um, tapping online program. Uh, in the, the more advanced modules, as you start to get to learn tapping, we work on all of the different issues, whether it's about physical movement or body image or whatever the issue is. And then as we get more advanced, we start to do some of our own silent tapping. So you can just tap away with whatever issue relates to you. So try and think of something that's still there for you. Um, and if you, um, if you want to at any stage, let me know your SUD scale and where it's going. And let's do one final round of silent tapping. Although I'm going to be silent, you, I think it's a really good idea to verbalize the statements. Verbalizing the statements is a really powerful way to focus on them. Take a final breath. Guys, really, really good job. I hope you've benefited from that. We often um, really use uh, the tapping technique really to focus on food cravings and emotional eating. Uh, but there's there's really good emerging research for, for tapping that actually preceded all of the food cravings research. 
um, around uh, post-traumatic stress, depression, anxiety. So what we've done today is kind of zoomed out from our food, movement, weight, body image focus into more general psychology because sometimes we do this in one-on-one -on -one psychology sessions. We have to say, you know what, today we've got bigger fish to fry than your eating, movement, weight, body image. I think this is probably one of those times. So thank you so much for uh, for being with me on this, uh, this tapping session. Uh, please take care of yourselves and each other. Let's uh, be really smart and, 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 and make the right choices because we are, we are all in this together. Uh, and, and I know that you have a beautiful technique here that can, can really help you find that balance between pushing yourself to reach your goals as if this, this isn't existing, which is just a, 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 you know, a, a, a non-sensical thing to do. It's an unsensible thing to do and, and completely abandoning your goals, which wouldn't serve as well either. You have a really good technique here that can help you. Oh, cool. Um, Karen said, thanks, Glenn. Um, it's made a difference. Narelle said, thanks, so helpful. Sue said, thank you, take care of everyone. Deborah, thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Glenn. I'm grateful to have tapping as a tool in my health toolbox in these scary, scary times. I must say this is, this is a scary, scary time for all of us. And I must say that, that I'm really thankful to you guys too because uh, I'm feeling a little bit lighter. So uh, stay safe, everyone, and we will talk soon.